Hi guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the paint rectification on the rest of the insignia. So obviously in the last video, we painted that side. I'm just gonna do a standard nib and polish along that side. But the paintwork on the rest of the car, right on the back of the boot, the roof, the spoiler, and also on this side, there's obviously, we've got quite a few marks and we've got quite a few surface scratches. And what we don't wanna do is obviously have the car really nicely polished on one side, and then, with, especially with this being a black car, leave the paint on the rest of the car, looking a little bit worse for wear. Like on the bonnet here, you can see it's got like a lot of car wash scratches. It's got a lot of marks and a lot of swirls in it. So what we wanna do is mint all this side up, the bonnet, the roof, and the part of the boot that we've not painted, and make all that look like new again, and also, because we use the TFR and we use the TFR neat, we have tarnished the trims, but that's not a problem because we can tidy that up when we polish the rest of the car up. We can use a DA polisher on those and bring those back up and make those look nice. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a step-by-step -step on paint rectification on old paint. We've got obviously quite a few videos on the channel already about new paint okay. and how to nib and polish new paint and different ways of cutting it and polishing it. So today I thought I'd give a little bit of a tutorial on how I would go about rectifying paint on an older car because older paint obviously is a lot harder and it needs slightly different methods because this is obviously factory paint so it's a little bit thinner than what we've put on with the gun so we need to be a little bit more careful about how we go about it but what we're going to be doing is taking a look at areas like this where it's quite heavily scratched and heavily marked and turning that all into what looks like a new car again. So I'm gonna put the GoPro on a stand and take you guys through a full step-by-step -step of the paint rectification process that we're gonna go through on the car. So first things first, what we need to do is get all the tar and all the contaminants off the surface of the paint. So we're going across with a tar and glue remover just to make sure that all the excess tar and everything is off the surface of the paintwork. And then just giving it a quick wipe over with the detergent. Now on a job like this, yes, I would remove the door handles and also go around and mask up any trims for the tri stage on this car to make sure that we don't mark any of those trims in a way that we can't polish back out when we come around to do the polishing stage. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of surface marks in this car from car washes and probably motorway miles with all that water and all that grit running across the surface of the paintwork, dulling it all back off and obviously marking it all and giving it that almost gray look and taking a lot of the deep gloss away from the paint. So what we want to start off with is a 3000 Trizat disc. We're going to use this nice and wet and we're going to go over this and give this a real good going over. Now, the reason that I wouldn't start off with something like a wet flat is we've only got so much material to work with to start off with. Now, in a factory, or the best way that I could put it to you, in a factory that I used to work at, it was literally, it was a one coat clear process. So the car's only got one coat of clear. Now, when we're spraying with a gun, we tend to put down a lot more clear on a car. And we can also put down as much clear as we want. So we've got plenty of clear to work with for a flat, flat and polishing process. Now, in a process like this, I don't need to remove the peel from the car. So my main aim is just to refine the surface and remove all the surface imperfections that are in the clear coat that is already there. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on this sort of process um, on YouTube before, and one thing that I don't agree with is a lot of people will use a paint thickness gauge. Now, a paint thickness gauge is all fine and well, but they tend to use that as a guide for how much clear coat they have left. Well, the issue with a paint thickness gauge is it reads from the very top surface to the surface of the metal. So, using a paint thickness gauge does not tell you how much clear is there, but how much total volume of paint there is from the metal up. Now, we've just got this new DA polisher from Auto Bright Direct. Um, it's their DA12, so it's got a 12 mil throw. I'm using a medium pad and I'm using the Freckler G3 compound. Now, as much as a lot of people think that a DA polisher 
And also myself, I thought that a DA polisher was not quite as good as a rotary polisher. I have found the last sort of month or so since playing with this DA polisher, because um, we've got this one and we've got a small one. Um, I've been trying different heads, different polishes, different compounds, and unbelievably, the DA polisher actually does actually work out a lot faster for myself because we can compound and cut all this back up, but with it being a random orbit rather than a rotary, I can do this in one single pass on this car rather than doing it in two separate passes. So I use in a compounding stage and then a polishing stage, I can get away with just a medium cut slash polish stage and then just literally put hand wax over a car and it will be absolutely gleaming. But the biggest part of it will be is there will be zero swirl marks at the end of it. We'll end up with a really nice gloss starting off with this pre 3000 which is quite an easy grade to cut from as long as you've got a decent you know polishing heads and a decent polisher and then using that 3000 we can then use a sort of medium not not like a really coarse compound and we can work it up even on a black like this in a matter of seconds to a really highly polished mirror finished look now i repeated this process over the whole car which is what i'll be showing you in this video and also we rebuilt the back bumper and the front bumper and we've got some shots of the car outside at the end so you just really can see the difference that this brings to the paintwork. So from left to right you've got the old paintwork to the new paintwork. You can see the real deep gloss that's come back, we've got that full reflection back in the paintwork and now the paintwork on this car really pops. Now obviously for a lot of you guys that watch the paintwork videos we do on the channel, then obviously you know I am a little bit of a perfectionist. So doing a job like this, on a car like this, yes, although we're selling it, this is going to turn this car from you know your average looking you know, nine year old car into an extremely nice example of a used car. You know, the paintwork on this whole car when we're done with it, will have all been refreshed and then we've restored all the old tired, worn, marked paint, especially around the door handle holes and things like that. Don't think that you can't get inside those door handle holes, just get the pull the tries that pad off and just do the inside those handle holes by hand and you can get all inside those areas, get rid of all those marks from people's rings and car keys and all that sort of stuff. And you really can bring paintwork up on a nine, 10 year old car like this to pretty much almost like brand new. The only thing that you obviously can't get out is the scratches that go through to say the base coat or like you know if you had lacquer peel or something like that or clear coat peel you, you obviously you can't get rid of that. It, it does have its limits but for all the surface imperfections in this car it will make this car look like almost new compared to being a nine ten year old car like it is which for us selling it for me and myself and Mick it's obviously going to add a lot of value to the car and for somebody who comes to look at this car the first impression is the one that makes a difference if they turn up and all your paintwork looks tired and faded then obviously they're not going to be very happy and you know their first impression is not going to be great of that car if they turn up and it's nice and bright and shiny and you can see the difference with something like that mirror cover you know it's gonna instantly take their take their eye you know and draw their eye to the car that you've got now whether it be polishing or tri in like I'm doing here I always try and work around it in a set sort of method so I'll always try and go over it one way and then go back over it the other way and I found with this DA polisher especially that's a really good way to go about using these DA polishers it's just, just take your time um, I found that one pass with the DA polisher to turn these panels to a nice bright gloss again it takes me no less time if not a little bit less time than doing say the hard head and the soft head with the rotary polisher and even if you're really really careful with the soft head of the rotary polisher you're still going to leave some swirl marks just because of how a rotary polisher works so as you can see on this panel here I'm working one way and then I'm working the opposite way and I'll do this say four or five times and I'll work section by section so I'm never overworking a, a giant area I'm keeping it moving these DA polishers are really good at putting like next to no heat in a panel so it doesn't matter if you wanted to work this section for quite a lot of time it would take quite a lot of time to put some heat 
into that part of the panel. Now, once all that was done, we've got the freshly painted, freshly rebuilt front bumper. We want to get that back on the car and start getting this car rebuilt. And as you can probably see, I've got my little helper with me here because um, this was a Saturday morning that we were doing this. We were just trying to get the last odds and ends rebuilt on the car, get the back bumper rebuilt, get all the back end done and get this car almost sorted now and to the point where we can get the last mechanicals done and get it up for sale. So we've just about got the car all finished up now. As you can see, we'll give it the full paint rectification polish all over so all the paint's looking nice we've done all the chrome work everything and this side where it was all smashed up is now looking nice and clean and all looking straight we've got the back end rebuilt so we've got the back bumper back on we've got the new trims the new reflector in the back and give this side Obviously, as you saw in the video, a full paint rectification as well, just to get all the marks out of it. So now everything's looking really nice and clean on this car. So the next stage for us is to get this off for an MLT. When it comes back for an MLT, we'll give it a final wash, do any little bits that it needs, and then give it a final detail. So that'll probably be the next video on this car and also the final video on this car when we get around to that. But as you can see, from what it was to what it is now, we're looking very very different and we've also had my little helper who's been in today giving us a hand to get it all finished off just got a few little bits like the badge needs to go back on um we've put a little bit of satin black on the grills to tidy all the grills back up at the bottom just to make everything look nice and clean and for something that well two three weeks ago we pulled out of a bush it's now looking like a new car ready for the forecourt so that's going to be it for this video for today guys and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye for now.